first to audition is Danny, a proud Portuguese Canadian. Julia. <laughs> Food is a huge deal in a Portuguese house. No, Danny. My dad is a European chef. He taught me everything. I got some crazy knife skills. I'm gonna blow everybody out of the water. Each home cook has only five minutes to finish plating their signature dish. If two of the three judges think they've got what it takes, they will receive the coveted MasterChef Canada apron and the chance to move ahead in the competition. How are you guys? Excellent. So what's your name? My name is Danny. Great. You have five minutes. Thank you. And what are you making today? I'm making pan-seared chorizo with a spicy Portuguese rice and a beer mustard reduction sauce. What do you do? I'm a high-rise construction worker. Wow. How high do you go? 60 floors sometimes. And that doesn't scare you? Uh, no, not at all. I do not do heights. <laughs> That's a lot of butter you put in the pan. What's the plan there? Just gonna put some beer in there. Okay. Mustard also. Mustard in a plastic bottle, you know? I'm a bit skeptical. Did you make that chorizo yourself? Yes, it takes me three days. How's your sauce doing? Yeah, it's a little buttery. Just put more mustard in, put more salt and pepper in. That's not yeah. hard. Taste as you go, right? Taste it again. All right, we gotta close this deal. <laughs> you happy with that? No, I'm not. So I think I'm just gonna leave it off. I don't wanna give you something that I'm not happy with. So was this hand cut, all the meat in here? Yes. Thank you, chef. I'm looking forward to this because you made it yourself. Yes. The sauce. It's horrible. I would never serve that to you. Sauce. Yeah, sorry. Sauce. Sorry, chef. Sauce. Sauce. <sighs> That's the game winner there. You're very proud of your sausage, aren't you? Yes, very proud. It's an old recipe. It came from my grandmother. Thank you, chef. Danny. For me, the dish fell short, so it's a no. But thank you for what you did. Portuguese families, they're very tight. Yes. Do you have any supporters here? Yes. We'll go get them. All of you, come in. This is my family. This is why I'm here. The chorizo was awesome. Apparently, that's a recipe that's been passed down. Yes. This is my mother-in-law. Mas a senhora pensa que o chorizo está bom? She says yes. Yes, it is very good. Well, if she says yes, then I say yes. Thank you, chef. I was looking forward to that beer and mustard sauce. That sauce would have made this dish perfect. But unfortunately, you blew the sauce. But you know something? I like the chorizo. That's good. It's a yes. This is what I've wanted all my life. Dream big. It's my model. Keep this just in case. The next home cook to try for an apron is one of the youngest in the competition, 21-year-old Eric, a recently graduated chemical engineer. With Asian parents, you have three options, doctor, engineer, or get beaten. I end up being an engineer. This is the one chance I have to escape what I studied for and actually do something I'm passionate about. And what are you making today, Eric? My dish is called This is Ducking Awesome. 
I'm making a pan seared duck breast on a bed of rice with a, my take on a red Thai curry sauce. You got five minutes. So tell me, your dad don't want you to be a chef. No. Why? Doesn't see a future in it. And you want to know something? I also have a degree in engineering. Really? Eric, what is your dream? My dream is to open up a restaurant. I just want to get away from like what I was forced to do, be my own man. It seems as if you have this burning desire to do yeah. this. This is a, a big chance for me to actually do that. That duck looks burnt. This is how I usually cook my duck. Plate has to be up. How many times have you cooked rice? <laughs> I don't know, a billion. What's this sauce? Oh, that's a plum sauce. Try that duck. It's got some good flavor to it. What's in the egg roll? Is there a duck inside? Uh, no, there's no duck inside. You put some duck on that, at least you know, there's some connection. Fat, you say it's crispy. Yeah. I say it's burnt. It doesn't taste burnt, I promise you that. Eric. Yes, sir. I don't like it when people tell me I'm wrong. Eric, you're a smart guy and you have a great story, but it's the food that really spoke to me. So I say yes. Thank you, chef. Eric, I think you know food, and I think you're a, a pretty decent cook, but I don't think you're ready for it yet. My answer's no. The chef tells you it's burnt, it's burnt. I understand, chef. Don't argue. Because if you argue, we don't want to teach you. Be humble. Learn. You're mm. smart, correct? Yes. yes I'm sir. smart. But if I'm going to give you a yes, I need to see more. Can you give me more? 100%, chef. Do you know who I am? You're Alvin Lung. You're a chef. You're an engineer. You're living my dream. Canadian land, the sea, and sky. The ingredient Marita chose was smelts. <laughs> These home cooks are squirming like little smelts. Smelt? Or is it schmelt? It's even got a dumb name. Schmelt. Who named that fish? Smells. Thank you, man. Portuguese fish. So I'm pretty happy. I am absolutely ecstatic. I know what to do with smelts. I've never heard of it, never seen it, never tasted it, never cooked with it. I'm screwed. I'm going home. Marita and Brooke are safe from elimination. They don't have to create an incredible master chef worthy dish with smelts. But you do. Ready? Your 60 minutes starts now. One thing you gotta be careful with smell, it doesn't carry a lot of flavor. It's a very mild fish. Yes. What would you be making with smelts? Well, I would just simply bread it, a bit of flour, deep fry, get it a bit crispy, and seasoning. I would probably go down the same route. I would be definitely deep frying. Yes. I might even add a little bit of ground corn flour because a nice bit of crunch, crunch and texture. Yeah. Exactly. So what are the pitfalls here? It's got to be quick, fast, direct heat. You're limited with the cooking methods. Exactly. They get very soggy and mealy if you stew them in the oven or bake them in the oven. Let me guess. Smelts and chorizo. No, no chorizo in this Really? One. You're doing? Smelt croquettes. Is that a Portuguese dish? It usually is done with cod. Figured I'd try a little risk and switch it up. You're pretty confident, aren't you? Absolutely. Danny just threw all his fish into a blender. <laughs> Pureed smelts is a no-no. What do you think of the big concerns here? You know, Danny's making a croquette. I can see the smell. It doesn't have a lot of flavor. Being lost in the potato and the seasoning. I'm in my zone. They're all nervous. Crap, crap, crap. I'm cool as cucumber. 30 minutes left. Gotcha. 
Danny, how are those croquettes doing? Uh, almost there. I would have killed that fish. You should be glad I'm up here. Uh, she talks a lot. She's pretty darn cocky. Kayla's got a lot of garbage on her station, man. 15 minutes! You have 15 minutes left! There's some very interesting dishes coming out. Very creative, don't you think? I am absolutely surprised. Yeah. Very much so. Dale's doing the gougere. Looks like a shoe pastry. He's trying to stand out. That's his strategy. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heads up! Woo! Good job. We gave you a beautiful ingredient from the Canadian oceans and lakes. Let's see how you did. Danny, please come up here with your dish. What's going on here? Smelt croquettes with chili lime sauce. Where are the smelts? I pureed them and then... You pureed them? Why? Why would you puree a beautiful fish like that and turn it into mush? Pretty bad. Danny, saw you out there. Arms folded like this. You're very cool. Always. Let's see. Is this a joke? I mean, this is Master Chef Canada. And you give me this? I'm pretty much screwed. I could be going home for croquettes. Dale, would you please? The home cooks are racing to finish a classic bistro dish, steak frites with Bernays sauce. The person with the weakest dish will be going home. Final two minutes, you should be plating. There's only three components on the plate. They all have to be perfect. Everything has to kind of come together in harmony in order to be a delicious experience. Otherwise, you're gonna have cold frites, hot steak, Bernays sauce, which is thick and gloopy. You don't want that. Three, two, one, heads up! Time's up, and I'm like, yes, got it all down. It was really close to get those fries down, but I'm actually feeling pretty good about it. I have no idea how my steak is cooked on the inside. It could be raw, it could be overcooked. I'm not overly confident right now. I don't know if I've done enough to make it to the top four. I finished everything. My sauce tastes great, my fries are perfect, and I believe my steak's a perfect oh. medium rare. I can't go home. I really can't. Kayla, we asked for a steak to be cooked perfect, medium rare. What am I gonna see when I cut your steak open? Um, nice and crisp on the outside and a beautiful medium rare on the inside. You're confident of that? Never too confident. It certainly is a little darker on the outside than I might expect. Okay. That is a nicely cooked, medium rare steak. Yes. See it quite nicely. It's a little dark in some areas, which would lead me to believe maybe the pan was a little too hot. Yes, Chef. But the cook is perfect, medium rare. The difference of color from the searing from the outside edge to a richer, deeper pink as it moves to the center. Beautiful. Thank you, Chef. It's very, very good. The seasoning is spot on also. Thank you, Chef. I was very concerned that you were putting too much on. Kayla. Hi, Chef. You happy? Um, I'm very happy with my steak and my Bernays. These uh, french fries? Try one. What do you think? I think they're cooked. I think they need more color on the outside, though. I definitely agree with you that it needs a lot more sun, I think. Looking at my fries, all I'm thinking is, where is my purse? I need my bronzer right now. These fries are pasty. I would pay for that. Thank you so much. It's delicious. It's well balanced, great acidity. How did you master a Bernays in one hour? You made it before? Uh, third time's a charm. 
Uh, this is my, my third time, but I, um, I'm, I eat a lot of it, so I know what it's supposed to taste like. It took me hundreds of times to master the basic humble hollandaise sauce, which is the mother of this sauce. And you've done that three times. Thank you, Chef. Had you nailed the fries, you'd probably have one of the best steak frites with Bernays that I've ever had. It's so close. Yes, Chef. So, Eric, what am I going to see when I cut your steak open? Perfect medium rare, Chef. That's pretty confident. Glistening, beautiful, very nice. Thank you, Chef. A nice sear on the steak on the outside and all the way around. See the color differences around the edge as it comes to the center. It is much darker and richer pink. Perfect. Thank you, Chef. Very nicely seasoned. That's about as good as it gets on a steak. Eric, looks very impressive. If that came to me in the restaurant, I would be a happy man. Thank you, Chef. French fries, that's nice. That's consistency. That's uniform. But then we're the crispy expert, right? Yes, Chef. I can basically almost, you know, hear the crunch. I would give this a very good pass. Thank you, Chef. Maybe a bit more. You know, when this dish is made properly, it has complete harmony. There's nowhere to hide, though, here. I'm talking about fries, steak, and a sauce. What happened here? I don't know, Chef. It's very thick. You couldn't even pour the Bernays sauce out. It's not uh, Bernays sauce, it's Bernays mayonnaise. It would really suck if I just went home and disappointed my family. I hope it tastes better than it looks. Me too, Chef. I am taking the biggest breath. I think I have a good chance to win this challenge. At this point, I'm thinking my sauce could definitely send me home. Mike? Boy, hey, chef. We asked for a steak to be cooked perfect, yeah. medium rare. Is that what I'm going to find when I cut into the steak? I sure hope so, chef. Oh, God. It's blue. As soon as Michael cut into that, I'm like, I'm going home for sure. That is not medium rare. No. Mike's steak is still moving. It's really tough. But Mike could be going home on a blue steak. Fuck. I just didn't get the sear I needed on it before I got in the oven there. You were the only one that took it to the oven? Uh, yeah. Do you think it was in the oven and out of, uh, out of your mind? No, usually, like, if I get a good sear in a skillet and five minutes in the oven at 325 will usually do it right for me, but I just didn't have the residual heat going into the oven. Nicely seasoned, though. Thank you. Very nicely seasoned. Are you happy with the result? I'm really kicking myself over that steak. I would be, too. Yeah. Hi, Mike. Hello, Chef. French fries? What do you think about them? Uh, there's a bit of a couple uneven cuts there, Chef. It would have been nice if I had a moment to definitely pick out some of the a couple larger scragglers got in there. The French fries taste pretty good. Crispy, soft, right consistency, nice size. Chef. How are you? I had better afternoons, for sure. That blue steak, there's no excuse. That cow's still mooing. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's not a perfect medium rare, but it is a perfect rare, which is not a bad thing for some people who like rare meat. The Bernays now. Nice consistency. Thank you, Chef. I like the shine to it. It's beautiful. This looks pretty textbook. I made a few Bernays this in my time. Well, I like the way it coats the back of the spoon, which is one of the tests for all apprentices when they make a Bernays, and it coats it beautifully. How does it taste? Mm. It's delicious. Thank you, Chef. For their first team challenge, the home cooks are at the Air Canada Centre, making lunch for the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Leafs alumni, and their families. But Dale's choice of fish is being challenged by his team members. So many bones. Fucking hell. And by Chef Alvin. Fish. Who chose the fish? I chose the trout. Get me a piece of pickerel. Get me a piece of pickerel here. We're really struggling at this point. The fish is a lot bonier than we could have ever imagined. I yes. made a mistake. This you is fully deboned. Look, it's fully deboned. It's a yes, fillet. Chef. So next time, check. Yes, Always chef. check. OK, go. Yes, Chef. 
With only 30 minutes to go before the home cooks serve lunch to the Leafs, it's too late to replace Dale's choice of fish, so the white team is stuck with deboning the trout. Fuck it. Fuck. He should have checked the products. He should have used the pickerel because he was filet, it was skin, he could have used it. He's lost he complete is. control of his kitchen right now. Oh my God. As the white team tries to get a handle on their fish, Help them work on those potatoes. They gotta go in the oven. Pino is running the blue team's kitchen like a well-oiled machine. My fish is going in. We are on top of the world. Everything is coming together. We just got a few things to take care of, follow through, check on. This is easy street now. Yeah, don't worry. I'm watching. I'm watching it, chef. While things heat up in the white team's kitchen, the Leafs finish their morning training and head for the showers. This is your 15-minute warning. 15 minutes to go before you have to serve lunch. F hell, man. Hey, get those fish in the oven. Get them in the oven, all of them, all of them. Wow, we need f Oh, God. Be careful. Be Our kitchen is chaos. Dale's not a very good leader. When you're catering an event like that, you've got to work with your team. But Dale kind of just seemed you know, to like run around and like yell at people. Please do not throw me under the bus. Come on, guys. We do not want to go home today. Yeah. Let's do this. I feel like everybody's going to let me take the fall for this if it goes down. Don't worry, baby. We got you. Nobody's going home. Not today. With the Maple Leafs now on their way, the blue team's perfect facade is starting to crack. It's gonna be tight with those potatoes. Keep the doors closed, and if need be, put some foil over the top, okay? Okay. The potatoes are gonna be tight on time. I just checked them. Okay, these are coming out. Perfect. They've already got the fish cooked, which I think is a little too soon. The potatoes should be where the fish is, and vice versa. Hey, guys, let's go. Let's get some foil paper here and start foiling it. I don't, I don't think Pino even has the pasta on yet. Pino, are you not blanching this? No. You're just gonna put them right I'm in the sauce? I'm gonna cook them in the sauce. Does it get starchy and heavy? Chef Clydo doesn't think it's a great idea to cook the pasta in the sauce. I am really concerned that I'm taking a little bit of a risk here. But Pino isn't the only home cook who's stressing about his pasta. Over in the white kitchen, Kayla's herb puree is getting the thumbs down. That is salty as in my opinion. It's, it's okay. too muddy, and we need to brighten it up. I'll prep some lemons. Kayla's definitely impressing me uh, by how easily she can screw things up. Kayla. Yes, Chef? I start chopping these tomatoes, OK? I'm I get blamed for it. Now I'm on to chopping tomatoes. I hate tomatoes. What'd you do? Go, go, go! Next thing you know, Kayla split her finger down the middle and she disappears. This is really gonna hurt us in the kitchen. It's not very hard to slice a tomato. This should be the simplest task in the kitchen. I can't let my team down. I need to get back in there. With only five minutes left before the Leafs arrive, the white team is racing to finish with one cook down, while the blue team is already setting up for service in the ringside dining room. We got the pasta pajol. We got our sweet potato. Green beans. We got our halibut. We're looking good. Green beans got to go over there. Put the pasta here and the salad at the end, OK? You're the boss, Pino. You don't know how these things work. You keep it hot in one and cold in another. There's no clear organization, and Dale's just screaming like a girl in the background, and nobody really knows what we're doing, so we're screwed. Who's plating what, guys? I've already been over this. You should have been paying attention whenever I went over. I was actually getting it stiff. I was getting it done. OK, that's not my fault. No. When we get onto the floor, there's still a few hiccups happening. But I don't have time to keep going over it, OK? Because Kayla had cut herself in the kitchen, she doesn't know what to do and Dale is being really mean to her. No, the other way around. Quit changing stuff. Please. This way? We want this together, OK? So they have a choice of which one to pick. Okay. Please go back to the station I assigned you to. I have this. I don't have a station, and I'm going to snap. OK, don't get moody with me, because you messed up, OK? That's not I my fault. I did not mess up. I wasn't told what to do. You couldn't handle it. That's why I switched okay. you, OK? Guys, chill, chill, there's chill, not, chill, there's chill. not time for this. Yeah. Not We're all good, this. guys. We got We're nothing. Not what do you want me to do? Like, really, guys, let's grow up. Like, we're adults, let's just serve some food. OK, I'm just going to stand here. 30 minutes. The home cooks are feeling the pressure in a nose-to-tail elimination challenge. I'm not cooking. I'm going to be immune from elimination. I can't believe that I actually made top 10. Feels fantastic. They have just 90 minutes to create a stunning dish using a variety of Alberta beef cuts. Nose-to-tail cooking, nothing goes to waste. Not even the brain. Hello, chef. Tail. So Eric gave you the plum cut. Tell me how you're cooking it. I made my own spice mixture here. You did? What's in the spice mix? Salt, black pepper, white pepper, garlic powder, uh, rosemary, and thyme. Fairly generic. 
Uh, it's, it's very generic, but I don't like to mess with meat. So I like to actually taste the flavor of meat and just enhance it a little bit. And the cooked degree? I am hoping for medium rare. You're hoping for medium rare? I'm hoping for medium rare. And what's in the pan? Um, it's going to be red wine braised leeks. Good luck with it and watch Thank the time. You. Thank you so much, Keep sir. an eye on that chop. Hello, Marita. Hi, Chef. How are you today? What are you doing? I am making a masala kidney. What are you doing here? I'm just testing out a piece to see how it cooks. That's a good idea. It's all, all curry, spices. Well, with the kidneys, I figured, you know, it needed something kind of strong. You're looking more and more like a one-trick pony. You have 15 minutes left. Julie has one of the easiest proteins to cook here, mm -hmm. and she's struggling with it. She looks lost. She's looking at things, prodding, poking. It's as if she's doubting her every single move. Should I be cutting my meat? I'm not trying to send her home, but she just gets frazzled by anything. Dora is the one who is really struggling here. She was standing around, pacing up and down, waiting for her cheeks to cook. I'm waiting on my pressure cooker. I'm freaking out right now. Yeah, she seemed to have nothing else to work on. Cook, you bastard, cook. I'm very concerned about Danielle. She lost a lot of time on, on trying to peel the underside of the tongue, which didn't need it. One minute! You should be plating! Shoot, shoot, shoot. I have so much going on. I think the steak is good enough to get me into the top ten. Finishing touches on those plates, please. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Heads up! I decided to go a little on the rarer side compared compared to the medium rare side. I don't know what the judges are gonna say about it, but I'm happy with it. Oh, I'm making it in top 10. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying, for sure. Dale, you're up next. The dish today is spiced tomahawk steak with parsnip stuffed leeks and tricolor french fries. Dale, you told me you were going to cook this medium rare. This is raw. It is blue raw. It registered 127 in three different places. I don't care what it registered. That is raw. The top four home cooks are facing their toughest challenge yet, battling to impress guest judge Joe Bastianich. You can talk the talk. I hope you can walk the walk. In a surprise twist, the home cook with the weakest mystery box dish will be eliminated. Who's going home today? Eric. Ten minutes remaining. So some very interesting things happening out there. At this point, I think Kayla, if she can pull off the stuffed veal, and if it's still pink and moist in the middle, that would be very impressive, but very, very, very ambitious. I'm really interested in trying Marita's roti. She's frying it off in a little skillet pan right there, and uh, by the look on her face, she seemed to be quite pleased with it so far. Eric, who's gone the traditional route, I think he's a little bit confused with what Italian, simple Italian pasta means. Like, I've seen a lot of raw garlic. You have just one minute left. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one. Stop. Hands in the air, everybody. Good job. The first dish we would like to try is you, Marita. Please bring your dish up. Everything's riding on the calamari. I am so nervous. OK, Marita, tell me about the dish. I did a Mediterranean calamari stew, a little bit of capas, and a roti with olives and fresh parsley. The calamari is cooked perfectly. Still very, very moist, very delicate. The tomato stew has very nice, fresh flavors. You taste the olives, you taste the onions, you taste garlic, a lot of garlic for me. It's a very, very good expression of ingredients. And I think, quite frankly, it comes together really, really strong. Good job. Thank you. 
Well, that dish looks beautiful. Thank you, chef. I think you've honored Italian ingredients really well here. I like the fact that you added something that's from you, which is the roti. Very strong dish. Thank you. Thank you, chef. I am so relieved that it's cooked right. Eric, please bring your dish up. Pasta and tomato sauce could seem too simple and underwhelming, and it could definitely send me home. Tell me about the dish. It's homemade fettuccine, sausage, hand crushed tomato sauce, topped with basil. It's pretty simple, though. Did you want to stay simple, or were you trying to impress? Um, I usually overcomplicate things. Today, I thought I'd stick with clean flavors. It does kind of come together as a pasta dish. It has good flavor. Try it. What do you think? Say you're in my restaurant. What would you pay for that? $15. $15? $20. Are you overvaluing yourself? Uh, see what they say. I'm really happy this time you kept it simple. Yes, yeah, chef. But if you're gonna charge 20 bucks for that pasta, that pasta better be right on. And I mean, from the sauce to the noodle. Texture, consistency, you hit it right on. I would say it's a very nice fish. Thank you. Kayla, could you please come with your dish? This dish could either shoot me up into top three or it could send me home. Tell me about your dish. Stuffed veal loin with cheese, olive tapenade, crispy fried capers. Very tricky to get a stuffed veal loin. Perfect. How did you want to cook it? Medium rare, medium? Uh, medium. 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 Yeah. Let's see. Not bad. It's a medium. True medium. So you nailed the temperature. You were able to get a nice seasoned crust on the outside. The filling, I take it or leave it. The pinkness of the veal in the center is spot on and it's moist and tender and really quite flavorful. You think you made any mistakes here? The fact there's no starch anywhere to be found. I think that it was a risk, and I think if you conceptualize a dish correctly, you don't always need starch. You've nailed the cooking here. The color is perfect. It's rested, basted it properly. You think this dish is gonna take you to the next level? I hope so, chef. I don't want to be too confident, but I think I have impressed them. Okay, tomorrow, will you please bring your dish up? Tamara, tell me about it. Veal loin boiled and pan fried, some spatzel, tomato uh, reduction, and a tomato salad. So, what did you think of this challenge? I think it was a really tough challenge. I'm a bit creative, and I like to kind of go outside the box. And today, I had to stay within the box. This is a very, very ambitious dish. Showing off a little bit here, right? Uh, no, I wanted to... You're not showing off? No. If I... you're not going to show off now, when, when are you going to show off? I'm a bit of a poker player. I wanted to do something that is going to set me apart from the rest of them. You have a perfectly cooked veal loin. Thank you. What is that with you Canadians? We know how to cook our meat. You know how to cook your meat. <laughs> yeah. What did you season it with? Just some salt and pepper. I think that this dish shows your ambition, but also at the same time, shows a bit of your inexperience. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. I see the tomato salad, super simple, super straightforward, and super safe, which is a little unlike you. And then on the other side, it is far more gutsy and adventurous. Veal, nicely cooked. I think you could have put considerably more white wine with that tomato base that you had there more olive oil, and had a much more luscious sauce. It's not perfect, but it's a decent dish. Thank you. Please join the others. We've tasted all your dishes, and now we need a moment to discuss. Everyone has a really good dish. I do not see a clear front runner. I think overall, they, they honored Italian ingredients really, really well. Absolutely. I definitely wasn't expecting top four to become top three. 
I'm super worried about going home. The I level was high overall, I mean, I yeah. have to say, oh, very impressive. Everyone had high points and low points, and I think this one is close. It was a little simplistic, right? You get that arrest right, you'd be very happy. Absolutely. That was fantastic, so. Yeah. Let's go break the news. Joe Bastianich will announce the winner of the Mystery Box Challenge, but it will be up to the judges to announce who is going home. Overall, I was extremely impressed the way that you Canadian home cooks handled my favorite Italian ingredients. The person who made the best dish in this last Mystery Box Challenge, who is about to become a top three finalist in MasterChef Canada is... Congratulations. So very much. Thank Great you. Great dish. Should I put this whole bottle? No. We should have waited on that. Anything acidic should go into the onions. I never do it that way. But no? Okay. Everything I suggested, Danielle denied. I'm putting some soy sauce in there. No, because we got brown sugar and molasses. I just don't think she knows how to make a good barbecue sauce. Kayla, what's up? The sauce needs some flavor. Like, I feel like it needs a little acid, or even the Dijon would be nice in there. Dijon, I think I'm okay with that. It, but let me get a group opinion. Dale? What? A little bit of Dijon in the sauce, is that okay? Yes, Dijon's fine. Julie, are you okay with that? Um, yeah, very little, though. Very little, Danielle, a little bit? I can't agree to put Dijon in a barbecue sauce. Okay, then we're not doing it. If we can't get a group consensus, we're not doing it. Come on, because one person didn't want it, it didn't go in. All right, what do we have in here? A barbecue sauce. That tastes raw. Wow. I would speed this up. Higher heat, divide it into two pans going at the same time and reduce that right now. Otherwise, you're going to have just tomato sauce on yeah. top of a steak, and I wouldn't want to eat that. Claudio told us what we already knew. We were not off to a good start. Hey, what's going on, guys? What was the feedback? Danielle, can we fix this, yes or no, or are we botching it? Danielle, comments, please. Be honest with me, I need the... It's not how I would have cooked a barbecue sauce, and I said that the whole way through. Can we fix this, yes or no, or are we botching it? I don't know if we can fix it, but we'll try. Work with each other. Come on, guys, this is for the truth. There's a whole thing of potatoes still over there. I need to get those potatoes out. We have enough potatoes, Julie, okay? Kayla has made the choice to no longer prep potatoes. I'm gonna keep doing them. No. Done on potatoes, you're done on potatoes. And I know this is a mistake. Let's get this going. Get those Brussels sprouts in the oven. We don't have that many prepped yet. Pino! Okay, hold on. We don't have enough Brussels sprouts. What can we throw in the Brussels sprouts? Some kale? Kale? Quickly, I'm thinking. Beans, let's put beans in it. I need to add beans. Okay, one more scoop. You have now 30 minutes left. So the steak better be on the grill soon. So let's get those steaks on. Danielle, how are you doing, hon? Morale is up. You betcha. Woo! OK, what's happening here? We're just starting to cook off our steaks. Whose idea was to dip this in the hot sauce and then grill it? Was that your original idea? No. And so why did you change it? Because barbecue sauce was not cooking down quick enough, so yeah. we are actually grilling it off. You don't have a lot of time. Yes, chef. What are you making? I'm just making a quick little bourbon sauce. Kayla, I don't think we should bother. Too late to do this already. If it comes together, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't, OK? It's not going to. You started it five minutes ago. You have to move one of these so I can get gloves. Yeah. You can ask nicely. You could listen to me the first time. I'm in the grill tent, and all I can hear is bickering. You haven't been listening to me this whole thing. I have. Actually, no, you haven't. <laughs> it sounds like an old married couple in there. Because what happened to that sauce that you were making? I threw it out because we don't oh, have time. Oh, right, because it wasn't finished. We're trying to get something done, and that something is feeding 151 people. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, ah! four, three, two, one. Go, 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 go. I got this, I got this, I got this. There is now! 151 soldiers will receive a steak dinner from both the red and blue teams and vote for their favorite. Hello. There you are. If either team runs out of any food, their vote automatically goes to the other team. There you go, sir. Thank you. The red team is serving roast potatoes and a Brussels sprout and bacon hash with their steak. 
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We meet again. While the blue team is pairing their steak and barbecue sauce with Brussels sprouts and beans and a couscous salad. Couscous salad. Thank you very much. You are. Enjoy. Blue's the way to go. Woo! Go blue! <laughs> go blue! While the blue team's service is fast and confident. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful Kayla day. is giving her steaks a last-minute sear on the flat top. Get it a little hot for you. And it's holding up the line. Can we speed this along? Kayla, we need the line to move, so no more grilling. Just do it. Yeah, you got it. Kayla. Yeah? I'm worried. This is all we have left. You have three more plates. My stomach is sinking because I know that every single troop member that does not get Brussels sprouts on their plate is an automatic vote to the blue team. If you're not a Brussels sprout eater, we won't be offended. Brussels sprouts out. Brussels sprouts are out. I know that this is going to cost us the challenge. Could we give you guys extra potatoes? Um, Kayla, that's not a great idea. I knew we weren't going to have enough potatoes, and we told Kayla that. We're almost out of potatoes, too, by the way. <laughs> Hi, how are you? And she just said, just keep smiling. That extra pan would have been perfect. Julie portioned them. So Julie was completely 100% responsible for the potatoes. Kayla, when I wanted to do the extra potatoes, this is why. The last of the potatoes, Kayla, we're done. Hey. I'm very sorry, sir. I don't have any more slides to give you. I apologize. OK, let's clean up. Minute 30, guys. This is amazing. She's looking confident. Ah! Very confident. Till the end. I am feeling proud of myself. Marita and Eric, it's time for the most important tasting of your life. Please bring your desserts to the banquet room. Let's go. All right, Eric, it's your turn. Please bring up your dish. It's an Asian banana split. Banana tempura, red bean and green tea ice cream, and fresh grated chocolate. Because there's no banana split without chocolate. Asian banana split. Hong Jiu Sin. You have taken all the comfort, the good of banana split, and you have put it into this dish. Red bean, that is comfort to Chinese because we love red beans. And green tea, that's universal. You have hit it spot on. You too have done an amazing job. I find the red bean one has a little sweetness to it that I expect with a red bean. The tempura batter, it is light and airy, so it really does not hide that banana flavor. I think it's a very innovative and high-reaching dish that you've done very successfully. Eric, I think the dish is very dynamic on many levels. And actually, the ice creams both taste incredible. They're very creamy. The one flaw, though, I wish there was some more fresh fruit on the plate to cut through the richness of the ice cream and the richness of the batter. But overall, I think it's an incredible dish. Thank you, Chef. Marita and Eric, please go back to the kitchen. The next time we see you both, we will be crowning one of you Canada's first ever Master Chef. Thank you both. Making a decision, it's going to be incredibly difficult. They were two amazing menus, two very different approaches. I think both home cooks just cooked us the meal of their lives. I feel like I just did something incredible. I am going to win. I am going to be Canada's first master chef. Marita has this wonderful gift. Her dishes really speak about where she comes from, herself, 
taste is very important. And what we taste is sweet, sour, bitter, hot, salty. She is an expert with those flavors. I've never had so much at stake. I'm definitely going out big. This is guns blazing. I'm, it's my future on the line. Eric, you know, he's always going to provide you a, a dinner that takes you on an adventure. Here, he used nitrogen. He did uh, double-cooked pork. He has moved a long way. Either of those menus, I would be proud to put on any of my restaurants. You know, we have a tough job ahead of us. This is next to impossible. There can only be one winner. That's it. extremely glad to be standing next to Eric, and I do wish him all the best. But this chef code represents the person I always wanted to be. There's no plan B. I'm not gonna fall back in engineering. I'm meant to be in the kitchen, and I hope my dad sees that today. Marita and Eric, after your incredible journey in this kitchen, you have both proven that you're much more than just home cooks and you've earned your place on this stage. Please trade places with the three of us. You two have been on a grueling culinary journey. You've both fought hard to be here, and you've grown, not only as cooks, but as people. This is just the beginning of your food journey. This decision tonight is one of the toughest we've ever had to make. You've both performed so well that it literally came down to the smallest of details. But as you know, there can only be one winner. One of you will win $100,000, this magnificent trophy, and the right to call yourself Canada's very first Master Chef. The winner of MasterChef Canada is... Eric. Thank you so much, Seth. Fantastic job. Thank you so much, Seth. You have no idea how it feels to actually realize your dream. I gained my dad's approval, and he's really proud of me. Nice to see you here. Congratulations. You've done an amazing job. So proud of you.